long as everything goes smoothly from now until then. So mark that in your calendar and just prepare to have an awesome socially distanced party that will be better than any socially distanced party you've ever had. Um, and I'm going to read a quick verse that is somewhat related to the message today. Luke 6.31. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. Here's Caleb. Hey, you know, I learned something this week, too, about social distancing. It's, in fact, supposed to be called now physical distancing. Because we don't want you just to socially distance. If you're at the camp out and you're enjoying this, or if you're at a campground enjoying, you know, the outdoors, uh, you can easily physical, physically distance, but we don't want you to just socially distance. You know, so post in the comments. Talk to us through email, text, connect with one another. All the, those are the things that we're supposed to do. So that's one of our goals this, through this coronavirus is to stay social, but be distant physically. So last week I talked about uh, my grandma. I just want to give you an update how she was really close uh, to her, her last few hours and days of life, and she did indeed pass on Monday. So I pre I'm thankful for your prayers and your condolences. And um, I'm thankful that now my grandma, Aura June Chapman, is with her Heavenly Father and enjoying a pain-free life. And so, um, you know, as I think of my grandma, I think of the different stories and the things that, you know, the time that I had with her. Uh, because she lived in Colorado and I grew up in Texas. And so uh, we only spent uh, some time together maybe during the holidays or vacation things of that nature. And I remember going on this long RV trip through Washington, D.C. and Pennsylvania and all the historical markers along the way in an RV with my grandma and grandpa and my brother and cousin. And I just remember that that was an incredible summer two weeks that we had. Um, I also remember my grandma had lots and lots of hats. And there were so many different hats she had and there was always a new hat for a new day. Um, and I remember, you know, staring at my phone and thinking this was going to be the hardest conversation I will ever have with my grandma. That what I was about to do and about to share with her was going to be one of the hardest things I ever did. And I'll tell you more in a little bit. But last week we talked about, you know, what did the church respond with when... Uh, they were uniting. You know, how did they hear this message from Peter and John, these first disciples of Jesus, and respond? Well, they respond with community, with sharing and giving of their possessions so that everybody had need. There was preaching of Jesus Christ crucified, like that he's actually, you know, was killed on a cross. But then, you know, a couple of days later, he rose again, and, and things like this happened. You know, God's great blessing was upon them all. Like things began to, to go really good for this group of people. Everybody was, was taking care of one another. And there was, you know, the right doors were opening. The, the wrong doors were closing. And we find so much, you know, inspiration from those kinds of stories in, in the Bible. And specifically Luke who writes this account. You know, he, he writes this multiple times in the book of Acts. Like how people gathered together. How they shared everything. How things are going really good. Now, you know, in life, not everything goes good all the time. And same in this scenario, because this happens next. This, this nasty word, it's called but. Something happens next that changes what is the, the narrative of the story of how everybody was taking care of one another, and there was this love, and there was this response of community. And then you get to this word, but. So that's where we are today. It's like, how do you get to this place uh, of, or what's this next thing that happens uh, after community, after all this love is shared, and something happens? Like, we want to lean into that because when we know what's not working or what didn't work or what failed, it's going to help us even more do the things that do work, do the things that are healthy, do the things that are right. So this is a story. There was a certain man named Ananias who, with his wife, Sapphira, sold some property. 
Now, nothing, nothing wrong here. This is Ananias and Sapphira were part of this community of, of followers who, who began to, to listen and hear these words that were preached from Peter. And they sold some property, just like the story before. Last week, we talked about Barnabas, this guy who, who sold his property and gave it, and everybody was taken care of. It was a great story. Now, here we are. They sold some property. That's great. And they actually brought part of the money to the apostles. Wow, this is incredible. They're bringing some of the money that they got from this property that they sold to the apostles. They, they brought it so that they can use it to share with everybody who had need. Nothing wrong. Except somewhere there's something we've got to pay attention because of that word, but here it is. It says, they were claiming it was a full amount. With his <clears throat> wife's consent, he kept the rest. So what does that mean? He was claiming that what he gave was all that he gave. He's claiming that what he brought before the apostles was everything, but it wasn't. It was only some of it. So he lied. He lied. And why do people lie? I mean, why do you lie? Why do I lie? Why have we ever lied? You know, there's, there was a study done uh, with college students, and this might just say something about college students. Uh, maybe it has nothing to say about you. But it said that 18% of college students lied every day, or lied at least a couple times a day. And you know what's interesting, what they found about those same college students? That they also had indicators that they were more depressed, that they were more isolated, that they were more... Uh, they had self-esteem issues and things like that. So, but there's something that they were doing that was pretty regular. They were lying. And I think if we're really honest, you've lied, I've lied. There's been times we've lied. It, sometimes it's been on purpose. Sometimes it's been on accident. Uh, but why do people lie? Let's take a look. Well, here's a list that you know, I found on, uh, on, on the old Google search. Uh, to promote self, to protect self, to impact others, to avoid others, uh, to protect others' feelings, for personal gain, to be funny, to hurt. Now, for the most part, when people lie or when people aren't telling the whole truth, which would be what Ananias did, he didn't tell the whole truth, for the most part, it's these top couple ones, to promote self, to protect self, impact others. You know, maybe, you know, you've told a white lie, you know, you've done this, I've done this, where someone asks you, hey, how are you doing today? You tell them, oh, I'm doing great. But you're really not telling the whole truth. Or maybe you're not being completely honest. You're just sharing what, you know, they might want to hear or what you might think they want to hear. Or maybe you just you want to avoid that conversation of what was really going on in your life. Or perhaps it's, it's this one. You know, you have this loved one that's asked, like, how does this outfit look? How, how do these jeans look? Do they match? Do I look good? And maybe because you don't want to get in an argument or maybe because you don't want to, you know, say the truth, you say something that's a little dishonest or you tell a, what they call a, a white lie. Like these are some, you know, just things that every day or pretty common in our conversation that we tend to go to that talk about lying. Now, what we found last week was you unite with love when people are gathering and sharing and giving and selling the things so that everybody has what they need. It's uni they unite people. It unites and gathers people together because there's love. What we're going to find in this story is that when you lie, it separates. You separate with lies. So if you want to you unite with love, but you separate with lies. There's these two stories that are back to back. Unite you with love and separate with lies. So what happens to Ananias and Sapphira once, you know, Peter hears this claim that they brought everything to them? Well, this is what Peter said. He said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? Why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit and kept some of the money to yourself. Now, how did Peter know? I mean, 
was this a secret that Ananias and Sapphira had and they told Peter about it? No, no, no. This is the Holy Spirit, this inspiration, this God wisdom that Peter had when they brought it to his feet, when they brought it to him, he knew it wasn't everything. And that's what he says. like, you didn't lie to me. You lied to the Holy Spirit. He goes on. He says, the property was yours to sell or not sell as you wish. There's no pressure. Like, you could have done what you wanted with it. He keeps going. After selling it, the money was also all yours to give away. Like, you had a choice. He continues. <clears throat> he says, how could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying to us. But the God. Now, the money was given to Peter. The money was given for the people. But Peter's saying what you did wasn't an action against us. It was an action against God. He's starting to, to relate some things. And so as soon as Ananias heard these words, he fell to the floor and died. And this is dramatic. I mean, it's kind of shocking, and it's kind of fearful. I mean, in this text, it actually tells us that the people that heard and saw this happening, that they were filled with fear. Like, there was this, holy cow, I mean, this stuff, I mean, that's for real? I mean, lying, that's a serious crime or, or threat? I mean, be honest, I mean, this was in the top ten commandments that God given Moses. Like, thou shalt not lie. I mean, this was an important thing to God, but why? Because how you treat man is how you treat God. How you treat woman is how you treat God. How you treat your kids is how you treat God. And Peter was trying to tell us, okay, I need you to hear this. You know, this isn't just against me and them. There's a direct correlation with how you treat God, or how you treat man, with how you treat God. I mean, Jesus even spoke this to Peter. This is why it's so easy for Peter to say this. Peter heard Jesus teach about this directly. Jesus taught him, was like, hey, remember when you gave a cup of water to that man, or, or clothed the naked, or visited the, the, the imprisoned? That was like you were visiting me. And, and they asked him, it's like, what do you mean by that? We've never saw you in prison. We never fed you when you're hungry. They're like, no, no, no. Whatever you did, this is Jesus talking, whatever you did to the least of these, and he's telling Peter, when Jesus was teaching, he's like, whatever you did to the least of these, you did to me. And so when Peter's teaching this, he knows how you treat man is how you treat God. And what's sad is it keeps going. Because about three hours later, guess who shows up? The wife. She came in, not knowing what had happened before. And, and this is so interesting. Sometimes uh, whenever you've, you've been caught in a lie, because not every time, I think for most parts, you know, you and I and a lot of people may be watching today, we want to be honest people. You want to tell the truth. You want people to say this about you, that you are a, an honest person, that you are a man or a woman of integrity. Like you want the, I mean, so I don't think for a lot of us watching, you know, lying, bold-faced lies are an issue. I think it has to do more with what happens when we're confronted with something that wasn't true. And maybe you found out that, hey, you know, what I said, actually, I found out that wasn't right or that was wrong or I wasn't being as open or honest as I should have been. You see, sometimes we don't know about those things until God reveals them in your heart later. Where you thought it was okay at the beginning, but now it's like, ah, I don't feel good about that. I don't think I shared enough, or I don't think I was as honest as I could have been. Or maybe, you know what, now that I know that, I need to come clean about this. Now that I know that was wrong, I need to be open about this. And, and for example, uh, if... If, you were, if you've been watching for a while, you know, our services online, or you've been part of our church for a little bit, maybe you knew about a sermon series we did before uh, called When Life Takes Your Lemons, you know, what do you do? What happens when life takes your lemons? And we talked about five different parts of our life, and, and if you're a really good 
listener or you've been really taking notes and you have great memory, um, you remember all five of those. You know? Maybe you're the first time and you're like, oh, what are we talking about? Well, we talked about five issues in our life. The, the in, in order of priority, uh, there's financial, or least priority to highest priority. There's financial. There's, uh, oh man, I'm, I'm getting stuck. Intellectual, physical, relational, spiritual. So that, the spiritual is the most important. And we shared about, you know, what do we do in those parts of our lives so that we can um, take care of ourselves in this pandemic, in this coronavirus, uh, because, you know, it's different than ever before. And I, after, you know, that sermon series, I have gone on and moved on to preaching other ones, but I read this blog about plagiarism, and it really convicted me. It got me to think that I wasn't being completely honest with you. You see, those, those five things that I shared about, they weren't my ideas. Like, I'm not that smart. I'm I'll be honest with you, I'm not a master's level thinker. I have to do a lot of reading. And actually, I, I read a book called Oikonomics. Oikonomics. And it's a book on how to invest in life's five capitals the way Jesus did. And the authors Mike Breen and Ben Sternke. And the five capitals he talks about are the financial, intellectual, physical, relational, spiritual. So all those ideas and concepts did not come directly from my head and my brain. There was a lot that I used from this book that talked about, you know, what do we do with life's five capitals now that we're in this pandemic? And so there's, these ideas weren't my own, but I didn't share the reference or cite like, hey, guess what? You know, I'm, I'm, I've read this book and I really believe that a lot of this is going to help us through this pandemic and I want to preach from it, not word for word, but using the ideas and concepts. And after like, realizing, you know, it's plagiarism when you don't cite and reference sources and that is lying, that's deceiving, that's not being open and honest. And for me, like I wanted to be completely honest with you about that because I think sometimes you go through life and you don't realize there's some things that you need to be open about until maybe a little bit later down the road. Or you realize maybe after a conversation that, oh, you know what? I didn't mention this, but this is really important to say because it's like holding back. It's like a relationship you have with someone before you, you get too serious or before you, know, you start talking about marriage or before all these things and you don't, you're not completely honest about some of the things in your, in your past. Now, you didn't tell them all about this, all this money and debt you have. That would be a, a big thing. If you're going to get married soon and you want to be open and honest, you tell them, this is how much money I owe and this is my bank account. That is a completely open and honest way to start a relationship that's going to be serious. Say, hey, I'm this much in debt. I have this much finances to take care of. This is who I am. Because when we lie, it separates us. So let's go back to the text. When the wife comes in, Peter asked her, Was this the price you and your husband received for your land? Like, hey, I'm almost throwing you a softy. You know, I'm lobbing on up. Is this the price? You know, there, this is your chance. If there's some things going on in your life, you know, that you need to be open and honest about, like you haven't said because you're, uh, you're kind of afraid of what they'll say or what they'll do, you know, let me tell you what happens here. Like she doesn't respond truthfully. She says, yes, that is the price. What's sad is, Peter said to her, how could the two of you even think of conspiring to test the spirit of the Lord like this? It's not an offense against man, it's offense against God. So, instantly, she fell to the floor, died. And it's, it's really sad. And again, you know, fear grips the entire community. It's like, man, that's harsh and like to be honest that is harsh lying is an incredibly harsh thing to do to it because it separates us 
line separates trust. And there it was. Great fear gripped the entire church, and everyone else heard what had happened. Because eventually, truth finds a way. And today, I hope I encourage you to take a step towards truth. Take a step towards being honest, a little more honest. Be a step towards being a little more vulnerable. Because sometimes we need to be uh, sometimes nudged to be a little more truthful or nudged to be a little bit more honest because it takes courage to be vulnerable. It takes courage to admit that you were wrong or you weren't completely honest or you know what, this is what I really think or this is what I really believe. Like it takes courage to be vulnerable like that sometimes. And so when I was about to call my grandma and I had her phone in my hand, I knew it was going to take a lot of courage to call her. Because I had to tell her something that was completely different than what she believed about me. Just like Ananias, who claimed something that he wasn't. He claimed he gave all this, all this money, but he didn't. And what gra my grandma knew about me was uh, just a few things. Just the things I wanted her to know about. I wanted only her to know about me being uh, a good student. I wanted her to only know about me being uh, a good soccer player or me being a good human being, someone who took care of others, someone who was a servant, someone who, who was very kind. And those were all true, but there were some other things that weren't quite true that I wanted to make sure to keep from her. And because truth finds a way, I had to call her. You see, my grandma supported me in so many different ways, and she prayed for me often, and she cared about me. And so there was a moment that I had to call her and confess, like, there's some things you don't know about me that I need to be completely honest about. You see, I'm a pothead. I'm 19 years old, and I got caught smoking weed in the dorms of my college that I was playing soccer at. And now I'm kicked out. And Grandma, you knew me only as this person. This is a true story. You knew me only as this type of person. And I need you to know that there's more to it. And that was the hardest thing I had to do. Out of all the phone calls I've ever made, because that relationship was so important to me, I was fearful that it would separate us. It would make things worse. It would make things harder to talk to her. But that's not how truth works. Love is what unites us, and it's lying that separates us. And when we share the truth, it doesn't separate. Actually, it does something quite different. Check this out. This is a psalm of David who, who's speaking to God. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. He's saying, come on, I want to make sure that everything in me is pure and right and open before you, Lord. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. When we become open and honest and we become like, there's nothing between you and me, God, and I'm being open and honest and truthful between my, the people here and, and around us, like, it leads to this path of everlasting life. Like, there's something about being true to yourself and being true to God that leads to life. And, and this is one of the main reasons, like for us, our mission to love God, love all people and make disciples. You know, we want to be a church of small groups. And we know that to be a church of small groups, that's the best place to be able to be yourself. Like, because this interaction like is a one-way street. Like, you listen to me and maybe you post a few comments, maybe you press a few heart buttons and you follow us on Facebook or you like us here or there. But there's no two-sided interaction. To be truthful and honest, you need to talk and, and, and share your side of things, or you need to be able to share what's going on. And that's where small groups, where you get to be with others in a, in a group of 10 to 12, like that is where you find an opportunity to be truthful, to be open, to be honest. Not to a point where it's uncomfortable for everybody and that's like way too much to share, because there's places for that. To be yourself, feel like you belong. Like that 
is so important for us as a church that we're going to make as much as possible the church of small groups work for us. And in the fall, in October, we're going to open up small groups so that we can do that more for more people. Actually, this, la- this next week's our last week of small groups, and that we've had some amazing stories of how people have been able to share a little bit of who they are and, and, and being true to themselves and, and being open about what's going on in their life. You know, one great story is how you know, they shared their favorite cookies that they have. It's so small, but they got to be honest about, hey, these are my, my favorite cookies. And it was, this was through a Zoom call, a Zoom meeting. So how do you share your cookies? Well, you don't really share your cookies. You just show your cookie on the screen, and then you eat them. You know, that's what sharing and being open can look like, small things like that. So this is what I want us to do. I want us to untie the lie to unite the church. Untie the lie of, you know, what's going on in your life that might not be completely open or honest. and Take a step towards sharing something true. Sharing maybe that wasn't completely honest or maybe being open. I don't know where that is for you, but start to begin to untie the lie because we want to unite the church. So you can look at it this way. Untie it to unite it. Untie it to unite it. Untie the lie to unite the church. Untie it to unite it. Let me pray for you. God, we thank you that we have you, Father, who is there with us and you give us this Holy Spirit that is, gives us courage to do things that are hard to do. And sometimes just saying the truth is hard. I mean, you gave courage to your followers at the very beginning of this movement so that they can share the truth about you, Jesus, that they were filled with courage. And God, we pray for that same courage for for us when we want to be able to share the truth about maybe what's going on in our life. Or maybe that thing we weren't completely honest about. Or that thing that now that we know that wasn't right, or now that we know we should do something, like we wouldn't hold that in. We wouldn't keep it to ourselves, but we would continue to take steps to trust you, God, by telling the truth untie the lie. Take steps of, of truth so that we can unite the church. Because I know that it's love that unites, God. It's love that unites. And help us to be more loving. Pray these things in your name. Amen. Caleb, thank you for your message and your word. Appreciate you. Um, I'm just going to send out, us out with a blessing. God, help us be people who speak the truth in love that I just pray that your love will compel us to change the way that we live our lives, the way that we speak to others, the way we, that we speak to you, the way that we speak to ourselves, God. So this week, change us with your love and with your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace.